Holy God, we praise you. We praise you with awe and wonder on this new day, for you are making us new every day. Lord, we praise you in this place. We praise you in the streets. We praise you in our homes. But let us praise you most of all in our hearts. Be with us, God. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, I'm Pastor Julia Gonzalez, and it is a joy to be worshiping with you this morning, uh, both in person and online, because it is, wow, January 2nd of 2022 already, and I think some of us are still a little tired from the New Year's celebration, because there was a lot of joy in coming into 2022. There's a lot of excitement, a lot of hope, and as we look ahead to what the year holds for us, there's a lot to look forward to here in the life of the church. So some announcements for this morning, for instance, is that the St. Mark's Talent Show is going to be happening on Sunday, February 13th at noon. And while we're looking forward to having the talent show and the luncheon, it's kind of hard to have a talent show if we don't have the talent present. So all are welcome, all are encouraged to, to join. I heard Pastor Brian say at one point that, oh, if you've got an accordion, be sure to bring it out and dust it off. You know what? If if you want to bring the accordion, that's fine. I will request no bagpipes because bagpipes indoors is a little hard for everyone. But other than that, show us your talent. Let yourself shine and let us have fun together. We've got a lot of different studies that will be starting up in the new year. So if you're looking to join a Bible study, we've got a few different options for you to join those. We also have the Mothers of Preschoolers MOPs that will be meeting and several service opportunities. But right now, I'd like to invite Jennifer Cloud Buckner to share a little bit about a very special um, training that we'll be offering. Yeah, good morning. Um, you might notice on the left-hand side there in the blue section, there's um, the Suicide Prevention QPR training. That is Sunday, February 6th, and we need advanced registration by the end of January. And uh, I would invite if you have a loved one who, um, or a friend or a colleague, anyone who seems depressed or hopeless or kind of overwhelmed and you're not really sure how to respond to that, um, this is the training that gives you the tools uh, to know what to say in those situations and some resources to call on. And we are very privileged to have a, a trained counselor who is going to be presenting that workshop for us. So I would invite you all, uh, it's for adults of all ages and for uh, kids in grades 9 through 12 with an accompanying parent. So you can register at uh, stmarkscarmel.org slash signups or stmarkscarmel.org slash QPR, and there's a couple other places on the website you can click to find it. When we're looking so much towards hope, it's good to remember that we can also find tools to help us be a source of hope for others. If you have questions or concerns, want more information, it's okay to ask. We'll find a way to figure it out together. I'd like to remind you now to please check in online or to fill in the blue book so that it may be in your pews. You can check in online at stmarkscarmel.org slash attend, letting us know that you're here, but also letting us know if you have a prayer request, whether for yourself, your family, another loved one, how can we be praying for you this week? Uh, we also will be... Um, we are also continuing to seek ways that we can grow in the community, ways that we can serve as a church. Uh, we will be, if you feel so called, you can give in the baskets at the back of the sanctuary at the end of the service or by going to stmarkscarmel.org slash give to give online. This month, as we start a new year, we're going to be looking to support Mission Guatemala this month which is a United Methodist-related organization with a mission to help meet the basic needs and improve the quality of life of underserved Guatemalan people. And it is, there's, it's actually very exciting that this year, Mission Guatemala is celebrating their 10th anniversary. And one of the founding members um, of Mission Guatemala is Tom Heaton, who has attended this worship service before. And I learned from Pastor Brian that He's actually on his way to Guatemala right now, today. Um, he's taken a slightly different perspective with that work, but he is continuing to serve in wonderful ways. So if there are ways that you want to serve, the ways that you are feeling called to mission work, there are ways that you can be a part of that. We're always looking to start new missions. We're looking to continue to serve in our community, not just globally, but also locally, nationally. We are here. We are called to be the church, 
and we can only be the church, be the hands and feet of God when we do so together. These are our announcements for this morning, and now I'd like to off ask you to take this time to get up, to stand up, to wave at the people around you, to offer a word of peace and welcome to others. If you see someone you don't recognize, make sure to say hello. If you see someone you do know, definitely be sure to say hello. It is good to be with you this morning. be seated. It's here as we look to new beginnings. We remember old beginnings. Like the beginning of creation when God hovered over the waters. And out of the void and darkness, God spoke. life was born. God can still bring new life. If you are facing questions, if you are looking for hope in the new year, remember that the great God who spoke life into existence is still God and can bring new life new existence, a new hope, and new purpose. So let us sing this chorus together. It goes like this. Your mercies are new. Your mercies are new. New every morning. Your mercies are new. Your mercies are new. Your mercies are new. Let us 
poured out. And his blood was poured out for the sins of the
the center of our lives. Move in us. That we might move in you, oh God. In the name of the one in him we in whom we live and we move and we have our being. You may be seated. Well, Happy New Year, and wow, not a Happy New Year, maybe. Happy New Year. Thank you. Much appreciated. We are continuing in the Christmas season. Isn't surprising as it is, even as we wish a Happy New Year. But we are also just a few days away from Epiphany, the day that in our uh, tradition as Christians that we celebrate the arrival of the Magi and the presentation of their gifts to Jesus. We celebrate this occasion as part of the Christmas narrative, but it's also part of the transition from the birth narrative to looking ahead and seeing this is what Jesus' ministry is going to be all about. Because the first part of the birth narrative, the part that is really focused on at first is the arrival of the shepherds, and there's the angels, there's Mary, there's Joseph, there's Elizabeth and Zechariah, there's John the Baptist, there's all these people who belong to a certain community. But when the Magi arrive, that's when the story starts to change because they don't belong to the community. They're outsiders who still are welcomed to hear the good news. This morning, we have a gospel lesson from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and verses 14 through 18, that's meant to shed some light on what it means for the good news to be shared with everyone. Would you please stand as you are able? In the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word. And without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life. And the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. And the Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And John testified about him. That's John the Baptist crying out, this is the one of whom I said, he who comes after me is greater than me because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. And no one has ever seen God, but God the only Son who is at the Father's side has made God known. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, and it is to God we give thanks. You may be seated. Would you please pray with me? Holy God of light, of day and night, of darkness, of joy, of growth, we turn to you. We seek out your light that shines, that guides us. Speak to us, Lord, you who in the beginning was the wor were the word, you who became flesh and lived among us, speak to us. Let us hear you. Let us know you. In the name of your Son, we pray. By the power of your Spirit. Amen. Now, last week, as part Part of our blended service, when we were worshiping with the traditional service and as part of the current service as well, we opened a final gift. And that was the gift that had been up on the altar, on the worship table for all of Advent. And what was opened was, what was in the gift was a seed. 
And that was shared with the children of the congregation as part of a kid's moment. And that was meant to be as part of a reminder of this is what I'm offering. This is what I'm willing to give to God this year. I'm willing to give everything that I am and see how God will change me, how God will help me grow. But I have a question for you this morning. What, what helps seeds to grow? Feel free to shout it out, or if you're online, feel free to drop a comment. What is it that is needed for seeds? to grow. Way to go, Amelia. That's right, we need water. Anything else? What else do we need for plants to grow? Light? Yep, heard a few people shout that one. Anything else? Is it just dirt and soil? <laughs> okay, do you all realize that she is showing up the rest of the congregation? Like, we've got one person answering everything, and she knows what she's doing, and I appreciate that. But that's right. We need soil or dirt. We need water. We need light. We need time. All of these things to help plants grow. And what I really want to focus on today is that need we have for light. Because the last few days, especially, even though we're not plants, but I felt it the last few days when there was no sunlight and it was nothing but gray skies for days on end. I could feel it. It was affecting me. It, it was hard. Because yes, it wasn't raining all the time. We could go outside, but where was the blue sky? Where was the sunlight? On Friday, I was out running errands and for a moment the sun peeked through and I almost stood in the middle of a parking lot and just stood with my arms outstretched to say thank you for the sun and just trying to absorb some rays because it felt so good. We need the sun for more than just light though. It's also the warmth. It's the guidance. It's for how, helping how we order our lives, our days. Because if the sun is not up, I try not to be up, which makes winter very difficult. But we need the sunlight. We need the light that guides us. And that's always been true, that need for light, for growth, for warmth, for direction. And that's part of why, in what's commonly known as John's prologue, I like to think of it more as John's overture, though. Because John uses his imagination. This is the disciple John, not to be confused with John the Baptist. John writes, of Jesus as being the word, of being life, of being a light to the people. Because that's something easy for everyone to understand. Everyone needs that guiding light. And in this overture that John has written, and an overture is typically what's, it's music, you know, it's not words. A prologue may be words, but overture is typically music. And it's music that's played before a ballet, an opera. It's a collection of themes. And something similar to our modern day would be the Marvel theme song played before every uh, MCU TV show or movie that's posted. It's a collection of themes. It's a collection of moments that tells you this is what you should expect to come. These are the emotions you should expect. And when you hear these words repeated, when you see something about this that makes you go, oh, deja vu, I've seen that before. That's when you need to sit up and pay attention. That's what John's overture, John's prologue, John's opening is about. This brief introduction to Jesus' ministry and what he'll be about. Of how he'll be a guiding light to everyone. And it is significant, the way that John writes, the creativity that he offers, because he writes of the world as being a good thing. And that's significant, because there's a lot of scripture that says, you know, we are to be apart from the world. If we're true Christians, we need to be apart and away from the world. We must not be overcome by the world. But John's opening by reminding us that everything that God has created is good. And part of what God has created 
created is the world. There is still goodness to be found among us. There is still hope and light and joy, things that fill us with peace and love. Some of you may be sitting next, right now next to people who give you love and fill your lives with joy. There is still goodness to be found. And John wants people to remember that. John wants them to hold on to that hope because it's not always going to be an easy journey. There are other parts of the overture that speak of how the world will turn away from the light, that there will be times where the world turns away from Jesus and doubts, is this truly the light? Is this truly the one that we should follow? But just because we turn away from the light, does that mean it suddenly goes off? If we turn our backs to the sun, or if as the world spins and we slowly move further away from the sun at nighttime, does that mean the sun has gone anywhere? No. It's still there. It's still shining. It's still present. It's just a matter of will we choose to grow towards it? Will we choose to move towards the light? And it's also a question of what does it mean to grow towards the light? What does it mean to accept the light of Christ into our lives? As I've mentioned a few times, there's the theme of change. When we accept Jesus into our lives, there's typically this assumption that our lives are going to be changed. When you plant a seed in the ground and water it and put sunlight and time into it, that seed changes. Even the sapling changes or the sprout. It grows into something new. And that doesn't mean there was anything wrong with what it was before. It was exactly as it was meant to be in that moment. But there's still room for change. There's still still room for our own personal growth. And what our growth looks like depends on who we are. It depends on how we're choosing to grow. And it also depends on how much access are we giving ourselves. How are we giving ourselves access to the light? Because Something I've noticed with having a couple of house plants that I put in the windowsill at home, I have to turn them around sometimes. Has anyone else with house plants or with any kind of gardening experience ever experienced this where sometimes you need to move the pot around? I'm seeing a few head nods, a couple of raised arms. You have to do that because from where the light is, that's the way the plant will stretch. That's the way the plant will grow. If you want your plant balanced out and it's in a pot, if you turn it around, you'll see the plant shift, and it'll continue to grow closer to the light. It leans into the light. So the way that we grow and change depends how much access are we giving ourselves to the light. How open are we? to God's light in our lives? How open are we to changing? How open are we to prayer, to singing, to regular worship, to ministry and to mission? How open are we to loving one another? And that's that last one, that openness to loving to one another into sharing the light. That's an important one, and that's one where we're going to move away from, from this imagery of plants and growth. Because one of the issues with um, thick forests is that you can tell there's been an old forest when the trees are giant and they've spread their branches wide, and there's barely anything growing beneath them. 
because the young plants aren't able to get enough sunlight, so there's no room for them to grow. On New Year's Eve, part of my tradition is I like to watch a movie. It's something relaxing. It's something that if I fall asleep before the ball drop, there's no harm done. And this year, I chose to watch the Disney's 60th animated special feature, or full-length feature, Encanto, which tells the story of a family living in Colombia, and there's magic, there's music, there's fun, and without spoiling anything, there's this focus on a miracle, on this miracle that has blessed the family with these amazing abilities, with this home, with this sense of belonging. And the main protagonist, this isn't a spoiler because it was part of the commercials, the protagonist didn't get a part of the gift. The miracle didn't work for her. And that puts her at somewhat odds with her family. But then there comes a point in the movie, this big moment, where the, the, her younger cousin, the next one who gets to step up and try to accept the light, it's his turn. It's his big moment. And what really stood out to me is that this boy, this child as part of the movie, who loves his older cousin, who is close with her, who would, enjoys being with her, and who is about to have his own special moment, says, I wish that the light would shine on you too. I wish that you could feel the light. I wish for you to be a part of this gift, a part of this miracle. And he does more than just say, I want you to be a part of this. He also reaches out his hand to her. When she's been neglected, when she's told she's not really part of the family, that she's part of the family, but she's not fully there. And we've all felt that sometimes, maybe not with our own families, but certainly at different times where it's, we're here physically, but we're not sure how much we really belong. She was in that moment of, I'm here, and I don't belong, but then someone reached out to her and said, yes, you do belong. Come and stand by me and share in the light. That's the image that I want you to hold on to as we go forth and worship, as we enter this new year, as we go into the week ahead. Yes, reach to the light, seek to grow and change, but none of us were called to keep the light of Jesus to ourselves. We were called to share it with others, to reach out our hands and say, come with me, travel with me, journey with me, grow with me. You belong as well. That's why the Magi were so important to the story, why we remember them every year at Epiphany and why we celebrate their story so well. Because they are a part of us. They are a sign that the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, would also be welcomed into the good news, that there was a place for them, that this good news that came to the world truly was for the world. It wasn't just a few good words spoken to an individual or to a certain family. It wasn't just a spotlight shown on one star, on one main character, but rather it was an entire sunrise, encompassing the world and welcoming all of us to come and be a part of the mystery, be a part of the wonder and the magic, be a part of the growth, because it is all of us together that make the world. It is all of us together that are the beloved of Christ. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, we recognize that we, we are all individual. We all have our own growth, our own things that we wish to change in ourselves. But Lord, even as we seek to grow and change, help us to reach out to others, just as you reached out to us so long ago. Open our hands that we may receive your joy, and open our hands that we may extend them to others that we may hold on and pull more and more into the light so that we may all find the way together. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. At this time in service, we're
going to be moving to a time of communion. And when you entered, you should have been given um, one of our individual communion packs. And if you're watching at home, you are invited now to go and get the elements that may represent the bread and the juice. If you are here in the sanctuary and have not yet received those elements, please raise your hand. One of the ushers will come and bring them to you. And we're going to have some music playing during this time, some time to contemplate and remember. Because part of the mystery of communion is recognizing how God is present in the moment of how Jesus is with us, because we celebrate communion because Jesus came to be with us, because Jesus came to earth as a child, grew up, and gathered his people together, gathered his disciples together around a table and said, take and he gave thanks to God and broke the bread and said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. And he took the cup and said, thank you, God, for this cup. Thank you for this offering. And then he offered it to his disciples, saying, take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this because I have redeemed you. Because I have redeemed not just you, but the entire world. And we celebrate communion. We celebrate Christ's coming because we also remember that this is a promise that we are a part of the community, that we are part of the body of Christ, and that we believe that Christ has come and that Christ will come again. And it's this hope that is our guiding light. So to you, Lord, we give thanks for the mysteries of faith, for the mysteries of salvation, but for the certainty that all are welcome, that we do not need to be United Methodists, we don't even need to be Christians to take part. We just need to be willing to accept your grace. We just need to be willing to be open to your love. So I invite you now, if you have not already, to take your bread. Take, and we give thanks to God for all that God has done for us, for all that God will continue to do through us, Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ which is broken for you. And then take the, take the cup, and we give thanks to God. We give thanks to God for redemption, for forgiveness, for a light that shines and guides us all. Take and drink, for this is the blood of Christ which is shed for you. It is these things that give us hope, it is these things that give us life. In the name of the Son, we pray. Amen. We believe that when we take communion, when we are, when we accept communion, the history of the church, we claim what we call the holy mystery of Jesus Christ. The sum of our faith comes down to three statements. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. So we're going to sing that. It goes like this. Christ has died and Christ is risen, Christ will come again. I invite you to stand as we sing this together. Christ has died and Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
Christ has died. Christ has died and Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Sing that one more time. Christ has died and Christ is risen. Christ will sharing the good news that there is a new dawn, that there is light, that there is hope, that there is a way to go, and that there is more than enough room for everyone. It's a light that shines for all of us. May you feel the warmth of the sun this week, and may you share the warmth of the sun with all that you meet. Go in peace. Amen.